Marvel Studios, Captain America, Civil War. Jesus. What's Six name? word salad. Yeah. Uh, the synopsis is very... Uh, the synopsis only has a few less words than the title. Political involvement in the Avengers affairs causes a rift between Captain America and Iron Man. Simple to the point. Uh, cast, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson. You know the deal. There's there's a bunch of others. Um, I did read that Mark Ruffalo was supposed to be in this movie. But um, they stated that his character was removed because at the end of Age of Ultron, he gets sent into space. And they didn't want to reveal where he was. You know, and all that stuff. Because if you remember, he he gets sent into space for Age of Ultron and doesn't come back until Thor Ragnarok. So I don't know if you remember that or not, but I don't. I don't I don't I don't even know I don't I don't know who his character is, to be honest. I don't know the Mark Ruffalo by name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's not very good. <laughs> I don't remember him going into space. I remember him being in space in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, so we get uh, Bucky in this movie. And this is this is a continuation of both Age of Ultron and Captain America Civil War. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah. And Bucky's they show his past in 1991 where he's being brainwashed with a sequence of words. And it's... I don't remember what the words were, but whatever. Um, it, we get mm-hmm. on on this watch. It reminded me of the uh, the Eminem song. <laughs> well, um, not alike, or he's ne- never mind. I don't remember that that song. Um, we we go to Lagos, where Scarlet Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Captain America, and the, and the Falcon are on uh, like an intel mission to try and take down an arms dealer who mm-hmm. has a bio weapon. And this is the this is the baseline for the entire movie. So they they finally cap or, or they they chase him down and everything. And he like suicide bombs, except uh, Scarlet Witch encases him with her magic powers or whatever they want to call it in this movie. Yep. And like as she tries to like release him into the air to blow up away from everyone, she she's not able to control it long enough and he blows up a building or at least a few floors of one. So that's, that's essentially what causes all of this. So the explosion takes out a bunch of people. There's, you know, an international incident with Americans on foreign soil, blah, 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 very political stuff in this movie. Um, <laughs> when we first see Tony Stark, he's got like this weird presentation where it's like CGI of him as a kid. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that was just disturbing. really weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's like, oh, it's called the uh, barf system or whatever. Oh, I got to work on that. Um, one thing they do in the Avengers movie is the banter between everyone and the, mm-hmm. the humor is always really, really good. I thought the first half of the movie, the humor wasn't really there i thought like the, the the way they were tackling subjects was just too heavy and the jokes felt out of place sure like i mean you know you you don't want really to get someone you don't want to get someone's nose at a funeral yeah <laughs> or have the exorcist theme play on your cell phone by accident it yeah. didn't happen. definitely didn't. but uh, i noticed a couple of um first of all when i was watching it I realized that we've watched so many bad movies, I'd forgotten what a good truck crash looks like. Yep. And uh, Marvel is like, all right, we got this truck. Let's do a flip. <laughs> and I don't know why they had the dump truck do a flip, because I don't think they actually opened anything up. They could have done the whole attack without that truck. But damn it, if it didn't look cool. Yeah. It was a distraction. But. There's no distraction that saves you from um, Falcor having insanely accurate multi-target missile systems. Right. And he should have done that instead of punching those guys because the missiles were way more effective than the punching. <laughs> and uh, we had classic bad guy activity. Uh, two guys are in a van of bad guys. Yep. And whatever the guy, the guy with the X and the mask on, when X the mask on just throws... Um, Black Widow into an armored van, drops a grenade, and then closes the door. And there's two bad guys in there. Now you would think 
they would react to a grenade being thrown at them by their boss, but they seemed to think they needed to punch her before the grenade went off and killed them all. Of course. Um, <laughs> which led to her somehow surviving that explosion. Like, if you're in a pressurized environment and a grenade goes off, you don't have eardrums anymore. <laughs> right. But she had someone blocking it, so she was fine. It was The explosion was strong enough to rip the doors off the hinges. She mm-hmm. doesn't have a superpower, right? She's not like Wonder Woman or like a super soldier. She's just she just knows like taijutsu or something. She's like a kung fu girl. Yeah, she's just like a badass assassin. She doesn't have any special yeah. powers or anything. No. So she just survives that grenade, that explosion that literally threw her and the guy on top of her through the hinges of an armored truck, but she's fine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um I liked the. I, di- I didn't quite understand what was going on with the mask guy. He had like a um, he had like a pump action like punching machine, mm-hmm. which seemed like a lot more work than just carrying a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> like all these, everyone in this movie has something they do that just seems less effective than carrying a gun, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, I know Captain America is like a badass, but that shield is about two feet in diameter. <laughs> I'm going to shoot him in his feet. <laughs> yeah. And then when he looks down at his feet, I'm going to shoot him in the head and he's not going to exist anymore. Right. Like Wolverine, I understand. He walks through the bullets. Captain America, everyone just shoots at the shield. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really get that. Especially when they're doing like those war scenes and people are just firing chest height so that he can... Yeah. <laughs> like they kind of did the same thing to Wonder Woman, but I assumed that like she was also being hit with bullets that didn't matter because she's Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Would it, I think it would hurt her still? Oh bullets. well, that, that that's weird. Then I, I thought she was just bulletproof because later on she flew around and punched a guy who was a Maybe. giant cloud. <laughs> I don't. I I'm not up on my Wonder Woman lore to be honest. But, but then again, I never said why she didn't just yeet that plane instead of having a guy fly it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just throw the plane in the air. You're a superhero. Right. I thought she could fly. But anyway, back to this movie. <laughs> a, a, uh... Yeah, so the, like all the things they should have, that they did instead of you know using guns like they should have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why doesn't Black Widow carry a gun? Like she picks one up to shoot she somebody. She typically does. She carries little pistols for some reason instead of like an Uzi or like a AK forty seven or something. You think Miss Russia would carry an AK forty seven? But yeah, like I mean, you wouldn't need the rest of the Avengers if you had someone as skilled as her using a gun. <laughs> yeah, but instead she just fights all these guys hand to hand. Who for some reason none of them think about staying six feet away and shooting her, which is good because then the movie would be, be a sad movie. They just shot her. At, like, Oh yep. yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So you talked about the collateral damage and is this the first movie where like, they really, you know, handle the fact they're destroying entire cities like every three months. Yeah. Because nobody cares about New York city when they destroyed that. But well, I guess when they destroyed Sokovia, uh, which this that's actually our next bit where uh, Tony, after his weird CGI thing, runs into a parent of a kid who was vacationing in Sokovia, which doesn't sound like a, fi- a vacation spot. But no, he was doing humanitarian work. Oh, oh, OK. But he was actually vacationing. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> he was telling his mother he was doing vacation, but we we all know or he was doing uh, humanitarian, but we all know what he's really doing. What? <laughs> I don't know. It was okay. a joke. It was supposed to be like, well, he's pretending to be like some, you know, hero, but he's really just getting drunk in Sokovia. I don't know. All right. So they create the Sokovia Accords because of the uh, destruction there and the destruction in Lagos. But I guess nobody cares about Lagos to have a Lagos Accords. And um, this pits Captain America against Tony Stark. Which this is the ex- this this is based on a comic book. Specifically, this storyline is based on a comic book. Uh, they did change a few things from comic book to movie. Um, the incident is uh, happened in the comic books where 
a couple of younger Avenger. Um, I can't remember exactly what their group was called, like Young Avengers or whatever. But they were in a small town in Oklahoma, I want to say. And a villain got loose and blew up the entire town. Um, like kind of suicide bombed it. And that's what that's what started this. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I kind of wonder about like the people who get mad at the Avengers. And I guess some of it does make sense. Like, like New York gets destroyed because like an alien portal opens up. Like, okay, you're stopping the alien portal. That that makes yep. sense. Ultron, it's like, well, maybe maybe don't make evil AIs. We shouldn't like if they yes. if the accord was to stop Tony Stark from making evil evil AIs, I think everyone would sign that. But I, I do kind of wonder, like, are the Avengers the best people to try and stop someone from smuggling a bio weapon? Maybe. Maybe if you're trying to sneak up on a on someone who has a suicide vest, you shouldn't wear a skin tight blue and red latex outfit. And <laughs> they were undercover, a, weren't they? A shield. What? I swear they were undercover in that part. Like they were wearing like fatigues and shit like that. Old you, fatigue. You colors. cannot be undercover walking around with a medieval shield painted red, white, and blue. Yeah, that's true. Also, when you're as famous as the Avengers would be, you can't be undercover at all. I'm yeah. sorry, but if like if if your plan involves Johnny Depp going unnoticed because he's wearing sunglasses and a hat, you're not a very good sp- uh, spy agency. Captain America was in the newspapers a hundred times. Anyone who is committing a crime probably knows what he looks like because they know someone who got punched by him. Yeah. In terms of the team that they sent, though, if if the Avengers are the right people, that is the right team, though. That that was more of a recon based team. And what they should have done was what they did in Winter Soldier and just have Captain America wore all black for the most of that movie. Mm-hmm. So, and he was he was kind of incognito for the entire thing because again in this movie, um he's trying to protect Bucky and that's how <laughs> you know, of course he is, right? Because during this during this whole situation uh, they they give Bucky the sequence of words and try and have him assassinate a bunch of people while they're in that um, in that facility. So it's pretty great, right? Yeah. So I mean, the the movie spends a lot of time talking about like the politics of keeping them in check, but no one ever asks like, so when next on the aliens attack, we're just gonna watch? Like, <laughs> yep, pretty much. Like they well, never even attempt to answer the hard question, so I spent a lot of time thinking. I hope the action starts so I can stop thinking about how dumb this is. Well, I think they like, they just want them to register so that they're government no, no. workers. They they specifically say that the Avengers will only act if they're approved by the panel. Yeah. So what if Thanos snaps them? They don't have enough people for a quorum, and the Avengers can't act anymore. <laughs> yeah. What, what they should instead do is just have the Avengers only handle like global threats. Right. Like, I don't think like, I, like, I don't think you should have the, like the Avengers probably shouldn't show up to deal with, you know, a regional or even a regular terrorist threat. Mm-hmm. They should just deal like if, you know, Thor's cousin shows up with like the destiny bolt that hypnotizes half the planet. Yet yeah, then Captain America and Iron Man, you know, you know, let loose on them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the Hulk isn't the best one to try and defuse a bomb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there has to be levels though, because Spider-Man's a, he's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's not your friendly intergalactic, uh, you know, and I don't know. It's just, it's kind of a weird thing. That's, that's mm-hmm. kind of how the whole civil war thing started, but, um anyways bucky bucky gets kind of brainwashed again right and he starts mm-hmm. messing people up and tony has this really cool thing where his watch turns into like a a piece of the iron man armor which is pretty yeah. cool captain america goes and like carries the casket of um i for, i forget her name that was the woman that he was in love with right yeah that's the woman that he went in a later movie, he went back in time to live a life with. Yep. Who was the chick that he kissed later? <laughs> well, it's that lady's granddaughter. However, 
the thought is that that's Captain America's granddaughter as well. Yeah. So, I mean, Captain America went and visited the woman he loved. So was like the other Captain America, like hiding in a closet when he came to visit. Yeah. I, I and he's know. like, don't tell me I'm here. <laughs> but if it was you and you didn't know it was your granddaughter, but then you went back in time and your yourself was about to kiss your granddaughter on the face, on the mouth. Wouldn't you stop yourself? Okay, but okay, the granddaughter though. Why is she kissing her granddad? I I don't know. I because she would Dude. know that it was him. Yeah, because she most people know who their grandfather is, <laughs> especially, right, especially if they have a close if they have a relationship with their grandmother. Yeah, like th- for Captain, for like for the, her entire life was Captain America just like hiding in the attic, like. <laughs> So, um, yeah. wait, so like who is, I mean, I have so many questions. Did yeah. other Captain America have a driver's license? No one ever recognized him. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what, what it's supposed to be, but they Time do mention, dumb. yeah, they do mention in one of the, one of the series or I think it's an end game actually when they, when they do that time travel situation, they're like, oh, well it doesn't change the past time time it just fractures into another one so theoretically yes it does uh, because captain america old man comes back at the end of at the end of um at the end of end game he's there and they yeah. didn't have anything for another travel so he didn't jump from an alternate timeline into that one to stare off in the sunset but as soon as he jumped into that timeline he fast forwarded or he lived that life and right. then was so, there he lived that life and ended up where he started. So he did affect the timeline he was in, which means when he was kissing that chick, he was watching himself kiss that chick. Yeah, maybe. And also he just, you know, didn't stop Bucky. He didn't stop that guy from blowing up the UN. <laughs> like yeah. he knew Bucky was going to get, uh, was going to get taken. But just like, well, can't change the past. Got to let Bucky get, <laughs> Yeah, he didn't Just change. Gotta let anything. Bucky get tortured and let War Machine fall out of the sky. How about let's let Thanos get all the Infinity Stones? How about you know? I mean, I. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird thing that they did. They really butchered the the end of Endgame. But I swear we could we could make a podcast about time travel and movies by itself and talk about this for days. <laughs> My blood pressure can't handle that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a comic book style fight scene. And if I'm jumping ahead, you can pop back at any point. Um, it's Cap, Falcon, Scarlet, Ant-Man, Winter Soldier, and Hawkeye versus Iron Man, War Machine, Spider-Man, Vision, Black Panther, and, and Black Widow. And it's awesome. They have this thing where they're both standing on each side of a of an invisible imaginary line and they just start charging at each other and oh it's so good i mean people don't really want to see these people fight against each other but man is this is this a fun yeah that was it was really really well done and yeah. this is the this is the moment when the movie really comes into its own like the humor there starts to work yep. um you kind of just let the plot holes melt away and you, you, and I really got into the movie here. I was like, ah, this dumb movie is awesome. Yeah, for anyone who's opened a comic book and you know, you're you're midway through page 10 and you see, you know, Cap and uh Tony staring across from each other and then you flip to the next page and this big picture of of both teams about to clash spread across the next two pages that is exactly what this reminded me of that's awesome that's that's one of the things that these movies do so well is that they really bring the comic book section to life even though sometimes the the stories can be a little wonky or you know that kind of thing but especially for someone who loves comics you you really can't go wrong and it any of the story plot holes or anything like you said just kind of melt away Really, I, I have a note here that says I'm really glad this enemy isn't a giant cloud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, this this might be. You think is this the last movie where they're not chasing a magic MacGuffin? Uh, yeah, yeah, because right after this, it's Thor Ragnarok, yep. and then straight into Infinity War. Yep, I guess Spider Man Homecoming. That one wasn't a MacGuffin high that run. Was poop though. Homecoming was awesome. Homecoming. Oh, the the other one wasn't good. The second one. What was the I second one? Where where he was fighting um Hornet? Or he was fighting uh Mysterio. Mysterio was homecoming, wasn't it? The one with the vulture was good. I don't know. I, I enjoyed all the Tom Holland Holland movies and the one really? with Mysterio. Yeah, my only issue is like had those drones managed to be so quiet, but other than that, I thought uh Mysterio movie was awesome. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe we'll do it on a future episode. Do do more fun movies, but we got we gotta get back to our hunt for the worst movie ever. Of course, of course we do. But what if we, we find should... it? <laughs> <laughs> then we can just be done. We're like, oh, found it. But if we if we do a lot of twos, but f- immediately followed by eights and nines, we'll be fine. We're not gonna drive ourselves nuts. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, though, um, when uh, before Bucky broke out, I have have a note here that the guy who was able to infiltrate the U.N., he's really lucky that Bucky didn't manage to punch out of that box like two words earlier. It would have been a short movie if there's just a guy with a hole in his chest next to Bucky. He's like, I think he killed them. (laughs) Yep. It's like, oh, man, good thing we didn't get into a fight over this. (laughs) (laughs) Like he was so calm as Bucky was punching through that wall, like he knew when he was going to come out. I'm yep. like, man, I'd have been re. If, okay, if a super soldier with a metal arm is punching out of a box, I'm reading those words real fast. Yeah, for sure. I'm certainly not pacing around. I'm doing it from behind another layer of glass. <laughs> <laughs> doing it over intercom, from a couple rooms over. <laughs> Wait, what, what are you doing? Wait, wait, like take take my cell phone in there. Would you put it on <laughs> speaker? He put he slides a burner under the rug or under the the hole in the door. He calls him from a couple miles away. <laughs> but um, we yeah. and uh, I have a couple notes here that uh, Black Panther is through a great effort, the dumbest one in this movie, which is really saying something. There's a, there's a lot of dumb in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I told you about the pump action uh, punching machine, right? Yep. Well, Black Panther's even dumber than that. I didn't kill your dad. So why'd you run? You came through the window with a shotgun. What would anyone <laughs> do? Like, you didn't see the 45 guys with guns? Yep. It's like, why are you running? He says with a gun and his adamantium claws. <laughs> It's like I don't know if you had been uh, kidnapped by Hydra Green. and Brain. Sorry. Like everyone knew he was a Manchurian candidate too, right? Yeah. Like um, Iron Man knew it, so I would assume that the panel knew it. If the panel knows it, one of the members knows it, and everyone's pretending like they don't know that Bucky was brainwashed by Hydra. Like that might be a reason to go in hard and like you know keep him under wraps. Yep. But it's certainly not a reason to like hate him. Like, like, like you're basically attacking a hurricane, pretending like it's evil. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I would have said a tornado. That's too much like a cloud for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then, <laughs> like, after Black Panther finds out that the guy was sad because his family was killed, he doesn't let him kill himself. It's like. He was literally an hour ago trying to murder somebody who was not in control of his actions, but this guy, he has to go to prison. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, I appreciate, like, I would appreciate a change in perspective if they had some reason for it happening. But seeing a guy sitting down after you find out the truth is not going to make you rethink the idea behind vengeance, would it? No. And. Uh, we at the end of this the battle, right? Uh, Don Cheadle gets shot out of the sky, aka War Machine, and I think he gets paralyzed from the waist down. Right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but then they show him walking around later. It's it's like it's a scary moment, 
But if you've seen a Marvel movie before, you know he's going to be fine. I mean, the only movie that's ever had any impact was Infinity Wars. And then Endgame came and said, nope, never mind. Like, one yeah. thing about Marvel movies is nothing matters. Right. Nothing will ever matter. You know this. I know this. Next episode, everyone's going to be fine. Yeah. Except Tony Stark and Black Widow. Except she's got a new movie now. All right. <laughs> Um, and the the last thing I have on this is the final scene with Iron Man versus Cap and Bucky, which is an awesome fight. So uh, Tony yeah. finds out that Bucky actually killed his parents because of the sequence of words. Right. And the, then he he does his best to take the dumbest person ever trophy from Black from uh, from Black Panther. But I don't know. Do you think do you think maybe he wins that trophy? No, I mean, because what? Well, because he knows about the Manchurian candidate. He calls in the Manchurian candidate, and he's like, "You killed my mommy." Yeah, and I mean, I I get that, but you're a grown man in charge of a weapon of mass destruction. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. You know, just yeah, that's should have a cry thing, instead of a murder. I mean, he Bucky's not at fault. He knows it, but it's just the. He's just sick. I think he's just at, at the boiling point of this dude. It's like all of this is because of one dude. One Russian spy. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I I see it. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense on the surface. But I can see where, you know, just the rage would take over. And it's just a really cool fight scene. And that moment at the end where uh, Iron Man's blasting Cap Shield. And they have that, like, kind of like standstill that that's also yeah. a big panel in the comic book it's really good best line in the movie when tony stark is like beating on captain america yeah. he's like stay down final warning <laughs> and then he spends like 15 seconds getting back on his feet i can do this all day i was like yeah there we go yeah. now now it's a captain america movie yep. it's only a captain america movie for 25 seconds but damn it it's a captain america movie for 25 seconds <laughs> yeah and then we go back to the Iron Man show. Yep. Um, so I have a couple more differences between this and the comic book um, that I just off the top of my head, really. Uh, the reason that Captain America is anti-registration, um, obviously in the comic book it's a little more detailed, but it has nothing to do with Bucky. <laughs> so uh, this, you know, his 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 reason behind it is is mostly due to Bucky, but there are some. Like when he first mentions it before Bucky breaks out and all all hell breaks loose, um, it's kind of more similar to that, to where it's like, you know, Captain America is all for the freedoms and everything, even though everyone knows who he is already. Um, here, let me pull up this note here. So uh, Spider-Man is a big part of the comic book and a deal was had to be made between Marvel Studios and Sony because Sony has the rights to the Spider-Man movie movies. And uh, they had to make a deal because Spider-Man is such a big part of the comic book version of this movie that they needed to have him in here, even though he didn't play the same role. So in well, play the same role, even though he's he's still Spider-Man in the comic books, he's on Captain America's team in the beginning, swaps over to Tony's team and unmasks on live TV which obviously if you're a Spider-Man guy, you know how important his secret identity is. So it was, it was just like this huge moment and I still have that comic book to this day. So it's really awesome. Uh, Spider-Man really waffles. He flips, he flips to Tony on masks, then flips back. So, and you know, in comic books, nothing matters. And they brainwash the world or whatever. I forget. <laughs> I forget exactly how they're like, Oh no, he's not Peter Parker. We we're just kidding. <laughs> but they do, they do at some point shortly after. But it it was just it was still an awesome moment. So, and the last thing is the outcome. So in this movie, uh, Captain America essentially just gives up his shield. He's just like, yeah, I'm I'm done, whatever. And we don't see him again till Infinity War. But in the comic book. He surrenders and is assassinated shortly after. And he's he's gone for a while, quite a while. And Bucky becomes Captain America for for years in the comics. So. 
Good times. Do you have any other notes before I give you some numbers? Um, no, it's uh, even if you don't have the comic book to memorize, it's still a good movie. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of um, I mean, it's it's a solid, you know, a a plus. Eh, well, maybe a a minus Marvel movie. Um, yeah. it has all the Marvel things. If you don't like other Marvel movies, you're not gonna like this. But I feel like everyone already knows that. Yeah. Was I missing anything from the comics? I, or from what? Oh, you 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 said <laughs> you said if I don't have the comic books memorized. Yeah, I was I was just saying that even if you don't have the comic books memorized, it's still a good movie. To oh. Watch. I see. I thought you were going to say I missed something. I'm like, oh, shit. All right. Uh, release date, May 6th, 2016. Man. And uh, this, we kind of mentioned this in our little episode, uh, in our Black Panther tribute episode. Uh, Chadwick Boseman had uh, cancer the entire time. This movie was his first appearance and for the entirety of his Marvel career was battling it which is such a testament to the actor the the person i mean the dude was in tremendous shape you know obviously and it's just a really weird really weird thing to think about now uh this is our first billion dollar movie we've done 1.152 billion i thought we did infinity war as an in game uh nope not yet um domestic box office 408 International 744 for a total of 1.152 billion and uh, 85 million worth of DVD and Blu ray, Blu ray and digital sales. Uh, the production cost 250 million. So they nearly made that back opening weekend with 179 million. <laughs> I think, yeah, with the yeah. exception <laughs> of Sin City, The Patriot, and uh, Fantastic Beasts. The opening weekend for this movie slaughtered every everyone else's total income. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, sure. this is this is like when Marvel's like hitting their stride. They just they just make money hand over fist, and then over another fist, and then over the hand again. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, so I uh, on this I, is the movie that spelled doom for Netflix series because they ain't that, they ain't got that kind of money. <laughs> that's right. No more I Punisher. Am... <laughs> There's too much money in it. Well, the reason that those went is because of Disney Plus. So fuck you, Disney. Uh, Six hundred forty-three thousand seven hundred two ratings on IMDb for a seven point eight out of ten. I think I'm that's more... kind of low. I'd give it like an eight, eight and a half. I think. That's right where I am. I was going to say 8.5 would be perfect. Um, but not everyone's into these, and some people give them a try and don't like them. And some, some people are like, oh, I didn't like this Marvel movie. Yeah. And some I didn't people know what to like, expect going in. Remember, well, I, I, I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was the My, My Hero Academia movie we did where it's like, well, I really think this movie's a five, but I'm giving it a one because all the fanboys. So, oh, uh, yeah. Remember that shit? <laughs> yeah, I guess Marvel does have some people that give it a low rating because they hate it, maybe. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like when you're late into a series, it's kind of, you kind of just have to give up on, like, hating it or loving it. It just kind of, it kind of is. Like, I wouldn't go and give Saw 5 a bad rating because I don't like Saw movies. Right. Even though those are stupid movies. <laughs> <laughs> Saw coming up soon on Media Men Online. Like, if you give Sharknado 1 a bad review because it doesn't have good um, CGI, you can't go and give Sharknado 2 a uh, bad review for the same reason. Right. Yeah, you, you just wouldn't watch it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? I, I have a couple one-star star reviews for you. Okay. Uh, this one is all in the title. It's hashtag Team Neither WWE Raw with superheroes. Okay, um, one out of ten. One of the I guess worst. that would be someone who just doesn't like superheroes fighting each other. Yeah, or WWE Raw. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> how can you not like WWE Raw? 
This one is one of the worst Marvel movie Marvel films ever. Hmm. Is that just what he said? That's just it. That's one of the yeah. worst. Civil War, more like a spit fight over a disagreement that puts lives at risk. Okay. Seems pretty what? stupid. <laughs> Oh my god. So uh let's zero see. out of ten, no cloud enemy. Yeah. Oh my god, this one is this one is very long. Okay film. One out of th- okay film, but you give it a one out of ten. Captain America Civil War is not bad, but certainly overrated. It has several ah. flaws and issues. Few of them are. Too too much of shaky camera view. Why many action films want to be another Jason Bourne. This guy, I don't know, maybe English is his like sixth or seventh language because it's really hard to read this one. The shaky cam on this movie was very minimal. Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, these people, a lot of these are just trash, trash, trash. Like, uh, whatever. All right, so that was Captain America Civil War. 